this is the make it or break it ingredient. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna shit you here. It's either gonna be a little bit much or it's just gonna feel awesome. And so you get like this, this rush feeling. Welcome to Price Plow. What's happening in Price Plow Nation? Everyone from Performex Labs Land and anyone looking for a powdered fat burning weight loss supplement, this is Mike Roberto, founder of PriceFall.com, and I got a doozy for you here today because we have 12 ingredients to go over in a sponsored Performax Labs Fitmax ingredient explainer. But wait, before we get into it, we need to get hyped. <laughs> As you can tell, I'm a fan of this brand, and we have been actually for quite a long time. Now, if you've been following Performax Labs for a very long time, then Fitmax is actually one of the first supplements they ever had, but then it went discontinued for quite a while, and then they came back with a thunder in 2018, re-releasing this version. I have the orange mango flavor. We have reviewed it before, and we can link back to that, uh, but I wanna talk about the ingredients way in more depth. So this is gonna be one of our more geeked out videos. We're gonna link back to the blog post that we wrote, which cites all the sources, and we're gonna go in even a little bit deeper than that. And so I do have the orange mango flavor. I have never tried the other two, but I love this orange mango flavor. Now, this is a 60 serving tub. Each serving is 3.75 grams. So you're gonna want a pretty good food scale. I got this food scale. And, um, and it measures down to like 3.7, 3.8 grams. And so in each serving of this, let's just get right to the caffeine part of things, just so you know kind of where this stands, because this is an energized supplement. In each serving of this, we have 125 milligrams of caffeine and hydrous. So this is gonna be a, a 30 serving, kind of two scooper for a lot of people, but, 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 wait, because there's a lot of other stimulants inside which we're gonna get into. So I'm typically liking this at about one and a half scoops worth, and uh, for that, you know, around five grams or so, maybe a touch over five grams when I use a good scale. And that's basically where we're at. So we're looking at, you know, somewhere between, really between 30 and 60 uses, but for me it's gonna be right, kind of split right down the middle of 45. Now, Fitmax, uh, getting, and so now we have a couple of different flavors. This one does have, uh, this is sucralose sweetened, like with these stimulants in here and with all these ingredients, there's a couple herbs, there's a couple adaptogens in here. It ain't gonna taste good unless you use sucralose. And there is uh, some like you know, yellow coloring in here as well. So just so everyone knows that, out of the way. However, what we're gonna discuss here is how I think this is one of the best fat burning powders on the market, if not the best, but further, I think this is a product that is going to be extra good for keto dieters or a lot of people who have deficiencies in their diet, they're missing a few things. And we're gonna get into those details as well. The, the reason I like this a lot as a keto dieter and I'll be honest, right now I'm not in ketosis, but I'm about to roll back in next week. Uh, as a keto dieter, this has a lot of things that I think are beneficial to, to you know, breaking down fatty acids, which is the whole point of dieting. If you're here watching this, that's the reason you're here. And so let's roll right into these ingredients and talk about why. But I'm positioning this personally as, first off, a fat burning weight loss aid kind of replaces your coffee or your afternoon pick me up uh, for anyone who's on a diet. But second, I think it might be even better as a pre-workout supplement for keto dieters, as long as you're cool with like no, having no nitric oxide kind of pumps in here. And so those are the two reasons here, but I think the low carb dieters should pay extra special attention. So let's get into the ingredients and we'll start off with two grams of L-carnitine L-tartrate. So we're starting with two grams of L-carnitine L-tartrate, but that's in the two scoop mega serving with 250 milligrams of caffeine. Most people will probably be coming closer to that than the lower dose. So we're talking about in two scoops, two grams of L-carnitine L-tartrate. And I love that dose because there's some actual clinical studies using two grams of that exact ingredient, L-carnitine L-tartrate. Now there's many different forms of L-carnitine, but L-carnitine L-tartrate is L-carnitine bound to tartaric acid and it is highly bioavailable. We talk about all sorts of different types of L-carnitines and what we're starting to see is that I think the benefits don't necessarily, even though there are studies that are talking about LCLT here, l carnitine L-tartrate specifically, I think a lot of the benefits of all the different carnitines at the two gram dose or so kind of apply as long as you're getting similar types of doses uh, with the other ones, with the exception of acetyl L-carnitine or L-car uh, does cross the blood brain barrier. So we really can't claim any of those kind of like brain cognitive effects here, although there might be a, a little tickle of that here. But really L-carnitine L-tartrate is here because L-carnitine is a compound used by your body, it's, it's created by your body, but more is better because it's used for fatty acid transport. It, transport. it transports the fatty acids to the mitochondria where they can then do the work they need to break it down those fats and create energy. 
Now this is, I, I believe this is especially important for those who are on a higher fat diet or who are very fat adapted, such as someone who's in ketosis. But the research is showing that in terms of weight loss, now car carnitine has been promoted for a long time for weight loss. The research really shows that it works best in terms of weight loss for two people. And in general, L-carnitine works best for three people. So for weight loss, it's really those who are carnitine deficient where the best benefits of, of weight loss are. And that's for those who are carnitine deficient, which is the elderly. And I really believe that anyone over the age of 60 should consider L-carnitine. Maybe not necessarily Fitmax because there's a lot of stimulants in here, but in general, the benefits to the elderly are huge because they become carnitine deficient over time. And then also vegans and vegetarians who aren't getting enough carnitine from their diet. They're not getting enough l carne which is bringing the L-carnitine. After that though, there was a recent meta-analysis that we posted a blog post about, and we'll link to that, where carnitine works also for a third group of people, and that's athletes. And then not necessarily for weight loss, although there could be some benefits for that, especially if they're a fat-adapted athlete, but it's more in terms of recovery, uh, the reduction of, of fatigue, increasing endurance, and really getting rid of soreness quicker because a lot of natural athletes need to work the volume-based play. Lots of volume, and if you're able to do repeated bouts of hard training, then you're going to have better gains as long as you're eating right, but you need to be able to get those repeated bouts in. And one of the ways of getting back into the gym, being less sore, is a supplement about two grams of L-carnitine a day. It's kind of funny, like you look through all these studies, that meta-analysis had about 99 different citations and like every study, for whatever reason, uses two grams of carnitine a day, two grams of carnitine a day, and that's about what you're getting with the two scoops here. Now, specific to the L-carnitine L-tartrate, is one interesting study that might have a little bit to do with weight loss, but in general, what they noticed is that two grams of L-carnitine uh, L-tartrate a day increases the adaptogen receptor density. And this is important because those who are training hard need to be able to induce muscle protein synthesis. And what the studies have shown is that you need to have uh, your available adaptogen receptors for your free testosterone to bind to, and then muscle protein synthesis gets triggered. Now, without that, it really not a whole lot happens. They've kind of shown this by having uh, the adaptogen receptors blockaded, then performing resistance exercise, and muscle protein synthesis basically kind of went to nil. And so you need to have availability of adaptogen receptors as well as the testosterone. Then you have a little bit of that binding magic, muscle protein synthesis goes down. Now it's also obviously beneficial to have food post-workout and all that. And so the scientists are still kind of figuring all that out, but in general, there's something going on with a high amount of L-carnitine upregulating the amount of adaptogen receptors you have and that's it's an extra cool benefit. And we like to cite that with the, uh, the L-carnitine, L-tartrate, although I believe that all forms of L-carnitine might really work for that. And just two grams a day of any form is like gonna be a very beneficial thing. But getting back to the main idea on this supplement, it's all about fatty acid transport. We're trying to burn fat here, and this supplement enables it. If you're deficient, you're not gonna be able to burn as much fat, and we're gonna watch in the next ingredient as well how things can compound if you don't have this or the next ingredient, which is choline. All right, that's right, we got two grams again, this time of choline by tartrate. Now that is in the two scoops dose again, so two servings, uh, and what's cool about this is that this is actually a clinical study for women, and we're gonna get into that, and then, and that's my favorite study to kind of cite when we're dealing with the, with the higher doses of choline like we have here in two scoops again, um, but also we're gonna then get into some of the, the, the more theoretical or at least the more scientific stuff on why this might synergize with L-carnitine, so buckle up. First off, what I love about two grams of choline, first off, we, we talk about it all the time on this channel in regards to the mind-muscle, the focus enhancement you get, from choline, and it's often in pre-workout supplements. And that's great here, but that's actually not the reason why it's here. The real, the real reason is that this really helps with fatty acid breakdown. So choline was studied in female Taekwondo athletes a week before the, the competition. They're cutting weight. So you gotta realize, I gotta disclaim this study. This is some extreme dieting going down because they're trying to you know, cut weight and get, get their weight down. But a lot of people are doing that before a bodybuilding competition or your, your pool party or whatever it may be, whatever. So the, the whole point is that we had women who were already in great shape and they're going to get into ripped shape. And so this is a one week study and you had the participants 
in the choline group against the control group. So they started out at a very, very good condition. 18.76% in the choline group was the starting body fat percentage versus a body fat percentage of 18.52% in the control group. So if you look up 18% body fat women on, on Google images or whatever, you're gonna see some very fit women. The, however, after a week of cutting weight, and doing at least four training sessions per week at 75% intensity. I, these women are probably training a little bit harder than 75% for the most of us. But they, uh, the, the actual participant group of choline, two grams of choline per day, and I believe it was split twice a day. So one gram earlier in the day, one gram later in the day, if you wanted to kind of do a split dose of this to kind of try to mimic that study. Uh, the, the study group went down from 18.76% body fat to 16.84% body fat, nearly a 2% reduction. Whereas the placebo group, they were still cutting weight pretty well, 18.52% body fat to 17.77% body fat. So in the choline group, two grams of choline per day, the women were able to go from like super fit shape to ripped shape. And that's the study I like to start off with when talking about choline. There's clearly something going on with choline and fatty acid breakdown, but again, we gotta emphasize that they were, they were in pretty extreme conditions. They are training to get their waist down, so keep that in mind. However, the research backs that up and the research shows further, and I'm talking about now like the research onto the mechanisms involved, shows that it actually helps synergize with carnitine a whole lot too. And that's also what we were just talking about for a little bit, we have two grams of that. So in terms of fat metabolism, it turns out that choline plays a critical role because it upregulates PPAR alpha. Now this is a protein slash gene sequence that is then uh, critical to fatty acid breakdown in the liver. And so we sometimes talk about a lot of supplements that upregulate PPAR alpha and they, they goes down some pretty crazy paths, but it turns out some of the simple supplements just like choline end up doing that as well. But further, Choline and, and carnitine even synergize even more because choline also upregulates uh, the enzyme, uh, I'm gonna get it right here, carnitine palmitoyl transferase one. And that's important because that's an essential, that's an essential part of the fatty acid breakdown um, in terms of just beta oxidizing fat in general. Now these two things, which you realize, where do you get, let's go on a little bit of a rant here. Now this is where a lot of the vegans and vegetarians go wrong. Think about this. How do you, you need, these, you need choline and you need carnitine to break down, oxidize, mobilize fat. What, where do you get carnitine? Where do you get choline in your diet? Meat and eggs. Choline is hugely found in eggs. And this is why adding, coal, adding even eggs to a low fat diet increases their ability to burn fat. A lot of people are even, and it, it gets to the point where if you have your calories kind of set, it's not, it's not important enough. You need the proper nutrients. Choline is a very vital nutrient to so many of these processes. And if you are depleting your body of choline or you're just plain choline depleted, then your body's not gonna have the actual chemicals it needs to have the reactions it requires to actually break down that fat and throw it in and use it as energy. And this is one of the reasons, it doesn't matter what your calories in or calories out are, you, if you're not able to break down the fat, it's just gonna sit there or you're gonna have low energy, you're not gonna be focused, your brain's gonna be all gummed up and everything, and choline is so essential. And this is why it's important to set up a diet properly. If you're a vegan, you need to understand these mechanisms that play, and it's not just about calories, it's not about fat, it's not about carbs or any of that. There's also a lot of these nutrients running under the hood where you literally cannot get things done because you don't have the compounds available to run these chemical reactions. And so that's the end of my rant. Choline is critically important, and because of the reactions and the way that it enhances carnitine, you're gonna increase your pool of carnitine, you're gonna increase your ability to metabolize and mobilize fat, but both of these work well together. And a lot of these fat-burning supplements, uh, we either see them kind of lower dose because they're in capsules, or we see one or the other in like other fat-burning powders. This is like right, right here. This is where I already love this supplement. It's gonna feel good and it's gonna work good with just these two ingredients almost. Uh, but plus caffeine, all those stems, which we're gonna get into. But right off the bat, you could tell like they went on both angles and these, these two angles synergize. And that's one of the reasons why I love Performax Labs and it feels good too, because two grams of choline, I will never complain. Now we could talk about the different forms of choline and all that. Uh, technically speaking, choline by tartrate, it has a lower bioavailability than some of the other ingredients, but in terms of the cost and the amount we're getting here, I think that I'm starting to believe that a higher dose of, 
of choline by tartrate is just as good as those lower scant doses of alpha GPC and all those, especially because alpha GPC in a powder needs to be blended at 50% silica and you're starting to lower your amount of choline the, more, the further you go down the chain, whereas choline by tartrate is 41% choline by weight and that's a good dose. So that's better than you're gonna get with the same amount of like alpha GPC or city choline or any of that. And honestly at two grams, I think the cost value benefit is, is there and there's some studies showing that too. So huge fan of choline. I don't care what form you get. Right here we have two grams of choline by tartrate. It's a studied form and it works well and it also synergizes with the carnitine. Next ingredient. So our third ingredient is olive leaf extract, typically standardized for aluropine. So Brad, throw that up on the screen, aluropine. We'll spell that out for you. Anyway, this is an important ingredient because it, it helps lower blood pressure. And that's a lot of times there's a lot of cardiovascular benefits and that, that's a good thing. And there's, all, you know, there's other good reasons to take olive leaf extracts, such as if you have like a, a minor infection that's not worth taking antibiotics, uh, olive leaf extract can be antibacterial, all that kind of stuff's good. But the real reason is because it also seems to upregulate the thyroid and that helps with energy expenditure. So uh, you know, I'm a big junkie. I'm making sure your thyroid is working optimally because everything else slows down if you don't have that running properly. Another thing, if you're here looking into your diet, the other thing to look into is iodine. A lot of people, if you're not getting iodine in your multivitamin and you've recently started cooking your own foods and you've switched to some of those sea salts that don't have any iodine, you might wanna look into that. I will have more information about that later on. So subscribe to the channel, of course. But for now, we're talking about a little bit of upregulation on the thyroid, which is gonna help your metabolism and help with energy expenditure in general. And uh, that's, the, that's cited on the blog as well. So on to the next ingredient. Ah, next, rhodiola. Everyone who knows me at least knows that I am a junkie for this adaptogenic herb. We have in the two scoop dose, let me double check that. In the two scoop dose, we have 200 milligrams of rhodiola rosea extract. And so this is what I like is it is standardized to 3% rosafines and 2% silicides. And rhodiola is an adaptogenic herb which helps kind of just regulate things when they're going wrong. So for instance, if your cortisol is high, it helps bring the cortisol down. If the testosterone or other hormones are too low, it might help them bring them up. It helps to regulate things a little bit and that's why it's called an adaptogen. It helps you adapt to significant stress. Some of that stress may be your diet or for whatever reason, for me, this works best when I have a lack of sleep going on. Basically, every time I see rhodiola, I get excited because it almost nearly guarantees that I'm gonna feel pretty good from the supplement. Now, in terms of weight loss though, uh, there, you know, so there are some of the fringe indirect benefits in terms of dieting. You gotta keep cortisol low. If your cortisol is high, basically, if your cortisol is high or your sleep is bad or whatever, then your weight loss efforts are really gonna be diminished a lot. And, and that depends on how badly your cortisol is. And so rhodiola can help with that as well. But, uh, but it's also been shown to increase lipolysis and even induce fatty acid cell death. And that's called apoptosis. So we have a citation on the blog talking about that as well. I think that's the real reason why it's here. But for me, you know, that stuff's cool. I, I'm not gonna notice it compared to some of these other ingredients in terms of like fat cell death. You don't really feel that happening. You do oftentimes feel the feel good part of the rhodiola, and that's why it's here. Now, um, with the, uh, the rosafins versus the salidrosides, the research is mostly done on the rosafins side of the standardization, and that's what we have 3% here, and that's a lot of the adaptogenic uh, stuff that helps lower your cortisol and, and such. However, the salidrosides, it, it seems that the higher uh, salidrosside-based content constituents of rhodiola sometimes increase energy as well. And so we don't have a ton of that here. Uh, we're mostly going for the, 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 the fatty acid cell death and just the feel good part of the rhodiola. Always happy to see this herb here. If you don't know what I'm talking about, then you should look into it because there's some really cool stuff like since the Viking days they've been using this stuff. Awesome herb. Now our next ingredient is our first stimulant, so let's get hyped here. Get hyped. <laughs> um, we have 50 milligrams of citrus orontium extract. Now we're not sure exactly what they're extracting here and that 50 milligrams is in two scoops, by the way, but typically when you have citrus orontium extract, that means we have 50 milligrams of synephrine. And if that's the case, then we have a clinical dose here with 50 milligrams of synephrine, you're gonna get increased energy expenditure and increased basal metabolic rate uh, after 75 minutes to a significant degree. So just sitting there doing nothing, this is one of those ingredients that can get the heart rate going a little bit 
and it's going to help your body move around faster and it's going to help your body burn a little bit of fat faster and it's typically measured by actually how much you're breathing out. Sidetrack here, when, uh, you, when you lose weight, you lose most of your weight actually through your breath. And so there's a really cool study about that. Anyway, it works similar to ephedrine, although with less uh, safety concerns, even though I, I honestly am not really concerned about ephedrine safety when it's properly extracted and uh, you know dosed properly in healthy individuals. But anyway, it works similar to ephedrine, but uh, is you know a little bit weaker in that in that aspect that it is a beta-2 adrenergic receptor agonist. So when you take it, this compound is going to bind to your beta-2 adrenergic receptors and it's gonna kickstart a nice little process of lipolysis and all sorts of fun, basically initiating a fight or flight response in your body to a small degree, not like a crazy degree, but it's gonna initiate that response where your body then says, yo, I got some stuff to do here, I need to fight or flight. Anyway, I need to burn some fat, get that fat ready and mobilized to use, and then you gotta go and use it. Now, in nature, obviously, you would, you know, you would use it for the fight or flight response. In our case, we're gonna use it to go and train. And so those fatty acids can reattach if you don't do anything. But at the same time, those studies have shown that there was increased energy expenditure without doing anything. But typically, when we're talking about freeing fatty acids, we want to go and train. Now, I believe it's a little bit genetic here as to how well these really work. Some people like myself just really seem to like get off on these beta-2 adrenergic uh, receptor agonists and other people aren't as into them. So I, it seems like the, like the majority of people really like them, but some people don't, they, they, but they definitely get you going. And for me, it feels good. It kicks off a lot of those neurotransmitters that feel good, a little bit of the dopamine rush, everything kind of just gets going with synephrine. And I, that's why I like to have it in here. It's just one of those ingredients that hits another good fat burning angle and uh, works all on its own, but in conjunction with everything else, I think it's a great addition to have to the supplement. And for people like me, who, I don't know, I seem to just enjoy these, uh, these dopamine inducing or rush kind of ingredients, the fight or flight response style ingredients here. I'm a huge fan of them. And so citrus orontium, most likely standardized for synephrine, 50 milligrams and two scoops, clinical dose. Nice. After that, we're not done with the beta agonist yet, but we have a different kind here. The next ingredient is eight milligrams of fucoxanthin. And so fucoxanthin is actually found in seaweed. This is a seaweed extract ingredient. And you might see it pop up here and there, but honestly, I don't, I don't think we see it enough. And so it's cool that, that Performax Labs added it in here. And so what this does is that it increases carb metabolism and GLUT4 expression, especially in the muscle cells. And so I believe that helps you get your carbs to your muscles a little bit more than storing it as fat, which we'll always take as a benefit. But now back to the beta agonist stuff. Fucoxanthin can work as a beta-3 adrenergic ag agonist. So this is going to be a different pathway than the last ingredient, which was beta-2. And this works in white fat cells. And once again, what that's going to do is allow you to mobilize a little bit more fat and have a little bit more energy at bay. But typically, you want to go and train with that energy. If you're releasing fatty acids, don't let them reattach. Go and get your ass in the gym. All right, now it's time for the caffeine. I don't know how much I need to go into the caffeine. We've already talked that each scoop has 125 milligrams and 250 milligrams in the uh, two scoop serving. Honestly, you know, we have a lot of stimulants that we've kind of covered here. We have a couple more to go. 250 milligrams isn't all that much, but in terms of feeling it because of everything else, I don't think you need a whole lot more. Like, like I said, I, I get stuck at the 1.5 scoop range here, so it's not even 250 milligrams. Whereas with energy drinks, I sometimes find myself needing more. That's because we have that extra fun stuff off here. So, so um, but you know, caffeine kind of gets the engine started. It gets the fatty acid turnover going. Things just move faster. You know how caffeine works and everything. You know how it feels for you. You either love it or you like it. Typically, there's very few people who don't like it. And if, they're, if they are, they're probably not watching this video at this point anyway. I think it's a reasonable and responsible dose. And uh, that's about it. I think it's time to, to, let's move on to the next ingredient because it's time to prolong the energy strike. And that's how we have two more different ingredients that are getting that job done. All right, keeping the stimulant train going. It wouldn't be a Performax Lab supplement if it didn't have this guy in here. N-N-dimethylphenethylamine citrate. And that's at 200 milligrams, a pretty good dose in two scoops. Now, this is the advanced form of PEA that uh, lasts a little bit longer. Now, PEA gives you that good, feel good uh, energy. It binds to the dopamine receptor and then your mouth enzyme just knocks it right off. Easy come, easy go, right off the bat. 
What's cool about this compound, which is found in a couple of different parts of nature, such as in Aria Drensis, but they are labeling it just as the ingredient itself, and and dimethylphenethyl means citrate. Uh, what's so what's cool about this is that it's a it's got the PEA backbone, which is going to attach to the PEA receptors, kick off some dopamine, feel good, but it's actually got two alkyl groups attached to it. Maybe we'll throw up an image of that, of that up here. And th what those alkyl groups do is they kind of get in the way of your, of your Mao enzyme. Mao enzyme breaks down the PEA. This, it like physically gets in the way a little bit so that you can have a longer binding and it's a longer lasting PEA rush, which means a little bit longer of dopamine. Now at this point, I do need to disclaim that you should not mix this kind of ingredient with a prescription drug such as like an SSRI or any of that stuff because you might put yourself in overdrive here. However, uh, this is like kind of the exotic stimulant of the bunch here and Performance Labs and all their stimulant based products, basically they love to use this, this ingredient. I am a fan of it. It gives you some, it gives you a little punch and there's no doubt that it's, uh, it's more than your standard coffee drinker is gonna be used to. So if you're new to this whole fat burning energy game, and you haven't had like a standard fat burning powder and you go right into this, you're gonna be wowed. I, I, I'm, I'm very confident of that. And it's, a lot of it is because of this ingredient. It depends on what other things you've had in here, like the synephrine and all that stuff. But this is the ingredient that gives you a little bit of the kick to the head factor, but not too much. And, and so it's blended pretty well. Yeah, there's just a good euphoric feeling from this in general. And, and you really, it's hard to isolate exactly which ingredient it is, but I'm gonna kind of make the assumption that it's probably this one. So big fan of this stimulant. We see Performax Labs using it a lot, and that's why a lot of their products are popular. If you don't wanna have that extra bonus stimulant, then some of their, their products may not be for you, but if you're feeling like, uh, you know, the standard caffeine fat burner, the standard coffee kind of drink just ain't enough for you anymore, this is your next step up into the, the first little realm of some of these exotic ingredients. And anything with a PEA backbone is typically fun. I mean. I should disclaim that some stuff with a PEA backbone is a little bit too aggressive, but this is like on the milder end of the next realm of kind of exotic stimulants. And that's why we're a fan of this. It comes, it goes, but it lasts a little bit longer than just the standard PEA. Awesome. So after some of our favorite stimulants, we have the super long lasting one, Teacrine. Now, actually, it's not really a stimulant. It's more of a, a neuromodulator, as they call it. And this is 125 milligrams in two scoops again of the 40% tasteless teacrine. You don't want the tasteful teacrine. You want the tasteless if it's a powder like this. And so uh, 125 milligrams times 0.4 is 40% tasteless. Uh, that gives you a 50 milligram teacrine dose, which is pretty good for a powder. We've seen higher, we've definitely seen lower. Now teacrine is like a neuromodulator. And, and to me, the best way of explaining it is that it prolongs the, the strike from the other stimulants is paired with. And that could also work in another fashion. It could also, I think, uh, prolong the strike of sedatives it's with as well. And so it does some really, really cool things, but it is of the xanthine family uh, alongside of caffeine. So it's kind of like caffeine's little sister in a way, but it does some really interesting stuff. This is a patented compound that is sold by Compound Solutions, but our friend who's been on this channel multiple times, Sean Wells, is actually one of the patent holders here, and he's got a lot of other ingredients kind of like this. Teacrine, it gives you a longer lasting feel. And so then if caffeine, if you're coming down from the caffeine, this kind of helps prolong things so that you don't get a crash or anything. And thankfully, uh, what I like about this is I've never gotten a crash. Some of those PEA compounds, like the one we just talked about, can sometimes induce crash. Teacrine, to me, brings that down like completely almost. I don't really ever crash from anything that, that Performance Labs has when they add this in. So big fan of that, big fan of the combination. Teacrine on its own though, I really don't feel, it's like it, it needs to be paired with other stuff in my opinion. And so that's why it's here. And then the last thing I wanted to say about about teacrine is that there's no tolerance buildup. At least after a week, they're showing that the, the, the same dose feels the same in and out. So, you know, caffeine, we kind of get used to, you need to up the dose a little bit. Whenever you find like your, your proper teacrine dose, you can usually stick to it. And that's what's pretty cool here. All right, we're back to the stimulants. And so next we have 50 milligrams of hortanine. This is another stimulant that you can get out of Citrus aurantium. And 50 milligrams is usually the standard go-to dose. Now this, again, is another beta-2 adrenergic agonist that can give you a little bit of that rush, but it's usually not used for that, that reason. It's often most used because it is a mouth enzyme inhibitor. And so like I talked about earlier, the mouth enzyme cleaves the PEA compounds off of your dopamine receptors and sometimes we want, you know, that's, that's a good thing. Trust me, it's a good thing. If you don't have that going on, then you, things might just get a little crazy in your life. But 
in general with these supplements, we like to dampen that a little bit. We want that PEA to last a little bit longer. Now, the first thing is we're using the, the form of PEA that is longer lasting in the first place, but we could also tell Mao to just chill out a little bit by inhibiting it, and that is done with hortonine. So we usually see hortonine between 25, sometimes up to 75 milligrams, but like it seems like nine out of 10 supplements, 50 milligrams, 50 milligrams, 50 milligrams is what we get, and that's what we have in two scoops here. So big fan of this, like the, the supplement's really starting to come together, if you, if you haven't noticed, that there's a lot of synergy between different portions of things happening. Choline and carnitine, for instance. Then we have hortonine and the PEA, and phenethyl, dimethylamine, citrate. Then we're also going to have choline and huperzine A. Is, but that, is that the next ingredient? It is, let's go into it. So the next ingredient is huperzine A. So it's a 10 milligram extract out of huperzia ferrata, and that's a 1%. So we're gonna have 100 micrograms of huperzine A. So this is a focus enhancing compound that is an inhibitor of acetylcholinesterase. And acetylcholinesterase is what degrades your acetylcholine levels. As we talk about on this channel a lot, it's a learning neurotransmitter. When you supplement a lot of choline, you boost up your acetylcholine levels, a lot of great things happen. You get the focus-based effect, which we weren't even talking about that much earlier on in the video, but you do get that a great focus effect. However, you have an enzyme that is going to eventually degrade that. Well, turns out that this ingredient here can, can degrade the degrader. And so we got all sorts of degradation going on in a good way. And huperzine A gives you a little bit of an extra longer lasting uh, cognitive enhancement because you're keeping your acetylcholine around longer. Also, there is some really cool research showing this stuff helps your brain generate new neurons, which I think is like just fantastic. So it's pretty cool. Typically we see it between 50 and 200 micrograms and two scoops here we have 100 micrograms and that's a good dose. Honestly, I don't know if I've ever really felt a huge difference between like 100 and 150 micrograms. I really don't ever see it too often over the 200 microgram dose. So we're right in a good safe range here and uh, that's huperzine A. All right, final ingredient, final sip. This is the ingredient that scared me the most when I saw this tub and then I realized, and that's where I, some of my opinions started forming on this ingredient. We have three milligrams of Rewolfia vomitoria extract standardized for alpha yohimbine 90%. That means we're getting 2.7 milligrams of alpha yo. And that is what I thought to be a very aggressive dose. The thing is, this is a very, very inconsistent ingredient and whatever Performax Labs has here is not as aggressive as some of the negative reviews we've get on it. I, don't, I can't tell you what's going on. We need to make a full video kind of discussing this. But this ingredient is very similar to Yohimbine, and that's why it's called Alpha Yohimbine, in that it is an alpha-2 adrenergic antagonist, which means that it blocks the alpha-2 receptor from doing its job, and the alpha-2 receptor is actually involved in fat storage. So this is more of a fat storage blocker, and what that makes me believe, and we're gonna have to test this a little bit too, is that I, I think you're gonna have more circulating free fatty acids for use. And that's why you, you get a bit of energy from yohimbine or alpha yohimbine. However, high doses of alpha yohimbine can make things a, a little bit crazy. Some people can, this is, this is the make it or break it ingredient. I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna shit you here. It's either gonna be a little bit much or it's just gonna feel awesome. And so you get like this, this rush feeling from this, or I get this rush feeling from this ingredient, but at the same time, I've had doses that were like half of this that made me have the cold sweats, and then I have them that don't. And so I, I honestly would like to know, this is why, I, I, I'm gonna go on a mini rant right here, this is why I would wanna know where things are getting manufactured, because I have a feeling that some manufacturers out there are getting some BS alpha yo, and this stuff like go, drives you crazy. Like you're like up a wall having cold sweats and everything. I don't get that with this one. So I don't know where people are getting their different alpha yo's, but I don't think they're all the same. It's a very inconsistent ingredient, but at the same time, it feels good when it's done right. And for whatever reason, this high dose doesn't feel like it, and I'm doing better with it. I honestly can't, can't explain that, but this is the one ingredient where you might be like, ooh, I, I'm not sure if I want that. But at the end of the day, if you can get a solid dose that feels good, it's also going to help block fat storage, and then you have the free circulating fatty acids, and then you gotta get your butt to the gym, and there is definitely, there is definitely a feel factor from this ingredient, but again, it's a high dose, doesn't feel high, I, I, don't, I, I don't have the answer for that, but that's, that's the main story here. So it's the stereoisomer of Yohimbine and behaves similarly, 
but sometimes at a lower dose, even more aggressively. Anyway, that is the end of the formula. Two scoops is where it's at if you can handle it, because that's where we're going to start getting some clinical doses. But honestly, I'm, I'm fine with like subclinical doses because the energy component is pretty strong here, not insanely strong. If you need insanely strong, then you need to go back and watch our Stim Max ingredient explainer because stim to the max is literally is like just throwing in every stim 400 megs of caffeine goes on and on and on with all these stims and it is like a punch you in the face pre-workout supplement this is more geared towards fat burning and as you see we're hitting lots of different pathways and that's why i think it's a great product i have the the orange mango flavor here which i'm running low on and it tastes really good i'm a huge fan of the flavor i, I water it down water it up doesn't matter it tastes good and that was one one point where we always used to get after performax labs was on the taste factor and then what they did is they took a product that shouldn't taste good and they made it happen because this orange mango flavor system is pretty good so that's my review side of things i am a huge fan of this brand i'm a huge fan of this product profile the one question is in the next batch is the alpha yo going to be the same as what we have here because that's make it or break it and i can't answer that question maybe they can chime in but other than that this stuff is awesome as long as you're cool with the 250 to 200 to 250 milligrams of caffeine if you need like to go bonkers with 400 milligrams of caffeine even with a profile like this then i don't know just add some more in yourself or drink with coffee but i really don't recommend that because there are so many stimulants in here and some extra fat burning ingredients, high dose of choline, the, the, the L-carnitine, L-tartrate synergizes, you have the extra PEA, I mean, the stuff's loaded up. So I'm a huge fan. This was not an easy video to make. It's probably running long now, so if you're still here, thanks for watching. Hopefully we learned a little bit and threw up some fun images and did all that, and we'll be back for the next one. So subscribe to the channel and check out pricelaw.com slash performax-labs because I think they have some new product updates coming out at the end of 2018, and they're just gonna keep going and going. And whenever a new flavor comes out, you can sign up for the alerts and we'll notify you. This is Mike Roberto with Price Ball. Thank you so much for watching. Welcome to Price Ball.